Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Spatial Web AI Podcast Knowledge Bank. My name is Denise Holt and I am your host. I will be speaking today about why the Spatial Web demands a new protocol. This is a four part series, so today is part one, and we're going to start with a little bit of background on how we got here. So before we go deep diving into the new spatial web protocols, HSTP and HSML, it's important to understand what brought us to this point. As technology evolves, the way in which we interact with it and utilize it to enhance our daily lives and productivity naturally demands more expansion and sophistication over time. As humans, we're naturally curious beings, always pushing boundaries to new heights of discovery. This basic factor, coupled with Ray Kurzweil's Law of Accelerating Returns, sets forth the evolution of information technologies on a predictable and exponential trajectory of growth creating an increasingly more complex interrelationship and interdependency with our way of life. What does this trend look like over time? So let's look at the evolution of computing. We started with operating systems and computer programs on personal computers, and the computing model was comprised of three layers. You have the logic layer, which is programs based on a set of rules, if, then, etc. And then the data layer, which is the user information as a result of interacting with the program. And then the interface layer provides usable access point for the user to interact with the program, right? The interface is how we interact. So then let's take computers after the web. So introduce the World Wide Web, we've got three new layers for shared network computing. The logic layer becomes the website, the data storage becomes the web server, and the interface is now the web browser. Then smartphone and mobile computing enters the scene, and now the three layers evolve for mobile computing. We've got logic is now apps, data storage, cloud storage for instant mobile access, and then the interface becomes the mobile screens, your phone, tablet, smart TV, etc. As we move into Web 3.0, the spatial web, things look a little bit different. We're now computing in 3D spaces. So the logic layer is artificial intelligence. The data storage layer is now blockchains. And the interface layer, you have augmented reality, virtual reality, Internet of Things, metaverse, and digital twins. With each evolution of added layers, you gain new abilities to accommodate the growth in technological development. The progress and expansion of technology increases the capacity of our performance and potential. So we spend about 80% of our time in these new computing spaces. Yet with each progression, we do not lose access to any of the old systems. And the same will be true of the spatial web. These new technologies will not force you to use AI, but you can, and it will save you time and effort, increasing your capacity for search, creativity, safety, and so much more. You don't have to use blockchains in the spatial web. You can still use cloud. However, blockchains solve for many of our Web 2 problems with security and centralized authority versus decentralized access. Same with AR and VR. These new interfaces are not mandatory. They will merely provide for a better, more immersive experiences with Internet of Things allowing real-time updates and adjustments. One fascinating element contrasting this computing era as different from any previous evolution, the spatial web introduces two users at the interface level. Artificial intelligence as the virtual assistant becomes a companion user to every person participating in Web 3.0, whether they realize it or not. Trillions of Internet of Things sensors are coming online in these next 10 years with data points that AI will interact with to update digital twin environments in real time. 
Over time, AI assistants will become the dominant user of the spatial web, parsing the gargantuan amount of data and information for us to access, use, and navigate through our daily lives. Human connection plus computing progress equals exponential network increase. As the computing capabilities have matured and evolved over time, we've also become more connected on every level, from sending mere messages from one computer to another, to sharing and accessing scores of information on websites, to mobile computing, social media, and gaming. Each new stage of computing has required updated methods for processing the new types of data and information exchange. Developing new protocols provides the necessary framework for increasingly complex network growth, establishing cohesion through common rules and guidelines. Next up, the evolution of the internet. So let's take a look at the history. The first internet, which was basically the late 1970s, we had email. We only needed one protocol, TCP IP. It had only one function, to send a message from one computer to another. The second internet entered in 1990 with the World Wide Web. We had websites, a new protocol plus formatting language, HTTP plus HTML, and then JavaScript around 1995. HTTP gave web browsers the ability to identify web pages and their locations through a unique ID, an IP address. HTML provided a common language and set of rules to format the web pages so that web browsers can read them and display the content. And JavaScript was used for interaction. Now we are at the third internet, Web 3.0. This internet is being termed the internet of everything, and it requires a new protocol and formatting language, HSTP and HSML. HSTP gives browsers the ability to link spaces with an ID for every person, place, or thing, both digital and physical, virtual or real. Much more than a location identifier, HSTP is a query language and gatekeeper, allowing various parties the ability to agree on who, what, and where anything is in space and what can be done with it. HSTP allows for query over multiple dimensions, identifying, localizing, and updating the state of objects in space and over time. HSTP supports credentialed search of objects throughout all spatial ranges, allowing for restricted access based on any access parameters desired. HSML provides an open standard common language to format all spaces through computable context awareness, defining all physical and social dimensions by recognizing and deciphering policy, rights, meaning, and culture at all levels of embedded systems, incorporating all data and relationships throughout and between them. All context elements get structured into a universal governance graph representing and revealing correlation, interconnection, and interdependencies within. Using measurable context, HSML becomes the foundation for a new generation of artificial intelligence and data sharing. Web 3.0 requires a new massive scope of global collaboration. Initially, the web was constructed as static documents, structured for information display and public access. In 2004, YouTube arrived on the scene, introducing a new concept of user-generated content, ushering in a new era, bringing social networks into existence, as well as websites like Wikipedia, granting users the ability to create and update website information, 
Along with the increased availability and affordability of high-speed connections, the web was suddenly transformed into an interactive platform embodying a new media-rich model of information exchange, Web 2.0. Web 3.0 moves beyond users interacting with websites. The technologies of Web 3.0, including AR, VR, AI, and IoT, necessitate interaction with each other along with the user within multiple environments, whether real world or metaverse digital twin, allowing for the jumping in and out of each, updating in real time. This requires thinking very differently about data connection within and between all objects, circumstances, and people. A new protocol and formatting language was inevitable. So this is part one of a four-part series titled Why the Spatial Web Demands a New Protocol. Uh, be sure and listen to part two for a deep dive into HSTP, Hyperspace Transaction Protocol, to learn more. And if you'd like to know more about the Spatial Web Protocol and the evolution of Web 3.0, visit spatialwebfoundation.org.